I work about a mile from my house in a pretty small town, 100k-ish spread out. I grew up in one of the largest cities in the States, so living here has been a bit of a culture shock. It's very easily accessible by walking, so I never drive. About a half a year ago, I finished work around 1am. No one is really out past 8pm here. A huge shock coming from a big city, so the park I walked through was utterly deserted. I live in one of the safest countries in the world, not America anymore, so it's easy to forget just how vulnerable I still am as a small female. I honestly didn't feel uncomfortable at any point of my walk, until I rounded the corner past some basketball courts near my house. I was still about two minutes away from home, and the stretch of my walk was completely dark. The moon was massive that night. While I had welcomed its light at the beginning of my journey, in the absence of streetlights, it actually made things look pretty eerie. I had walked this path hundreds of times, but tonight, something felt off. I'm not a fearful person in any sense of the word, but I was really on edge suddenly. Then, I saw it. A van in the parking lot next to the courts, with its side door open. I picked up my pace and kept an eye on it. There are usually cars in that parking lot. I live in a tourist town, and backpackers often stay in their vehicles to save money. I'd never seen one with its door hanging open like that in the middle of the night, though. I was so focused on the van that I missed the man walking out from the trees near the courts until he was a mere 30 feet behind me. He was walking fast, and there was little doubt that he was headed straight towards me. I was at a loss for what my next action should be. Screaming wouldn't do much. I was still too far away from any residences. I usually carry a glass water bottle with me for protection. We have very strict laws on weapons, but I'd left it at work that night. My phone was dead. Everything I knew better than to do, I'd done. And as stupid as I feel writing this, I hesitated running, on the off chance that he didn't mean to act sketchy. I have moved past this mindset overall, but there is still this strong part of me that backs at the prospect of making someone feel uncomfortable or embarrassed. I also hate showing men that I feel scared of them, because even if they hurt me, I'd rather not give them any satisfaction of seeing my fear. I also knew I couldn't outrun him. I also overthink everything. I saw a little dark blur darting across the library parking lot at the back of the courts. It didn't even register to me what it was. The whole situation was so surreal. The guy was behind me now, and judging by his footsteps, he hadn't veered course. I quickened my pace, felt out my keys in my purse, and slipped them between my fingers. I heard a slight jingling noise, and everything suddenly made sense. The blur was Apollo, the large black cat that often walked me home on the stretch after the park. Tonight, he was doing that weird cat run, where they get really low to the ground with their ears back. I had an impression that he was angry, but he was moving too fast for me to see his face properly as he rushed past me. I kept walking, but the heavy footsteps were retreating now. I didn't dare look back, and I kept moving forward quickly. Apollo was suddenly by my side still staying low to the ground and stopping every few feet to look behind him and hiss. Then he would do that weird cat run to catch up with me. He walked the whole way home with me, as he had done so many times, but I'd never seen him act like that. As we neared my gate, he visibly relaxed and flopped on his back. I coaxed him inside the gate before giving him some massive hugs and head bumps. I stopped walking home by myself at night, and still saw my sweet little cat friend often. I never saw him behave that way again, though. Apollo moved away three months ago. I still miss my little buddy, and I often think about how strange that night was. I wish I'd turn around to see him chase the guy off. I've heard so many stories about dogs protecting people, but rarely about cats. My own little girl would never do anything like what Apollo did. Parking lot creeper, let's not meet. Apollo, I hope to meet you again.
while this may not be super eventful, it was still scary. I work at a Walmart pharmacy, and this happened two days ago. As most people who work retail know, the associates have to park at the end of the parking lot, so it's a pretty far walk to the store for us. I'm a 23-year-old female. I was walking in the parking lot on my way to the store to clock in. I'm walking in front of a row of cars when I see a large truck ahead. There was a blonde woman in the driver's side and a man in the passenger side. I suddenly got this urge to walk a little further away from the row of cars, particularly that truck, so I walked further out in front of it. As I'm passing by, the man quickly opened his door and leaned about halfway out. He has a yellow card in his hand with something written in Sharpie. He says, Hey, ma'am, I need to give you something. He didn't get out of the truck, though. He was partially inside with the door propped open, leaning as far out as he could. He said, Come get this card for me. I honestly have never felt fear come over me like that. I looked at the woman, and she was gripping the steering wheel and watching me. The car was running. It's a business card for pressure washing. Just walk over here and get it. I thought you might be interested. I looked at him and politely declined. He seemed frustrated, and I quickly walked off. I had the worst gut feeling. Something was telling me to get away as quick as I could. I turned and watched the truck pull off and drive away quickly. Thankfully, nothing happened, but it was still scary. A few hours later, I was told a sex trapper had been arrested in another nearby Walmart just the day before. The boards on the walls with missing women, men, and children at Walmart are no joke. So many people have gone missing at large stores like Walmart. Always listen to your gut. Our car wasn't even turned off before the man started knocking on the driver's side window. My boyfriend and I were visiting our home state after a year away and decided to grab some drinks downtown. We had just pulled into the parking lot of a bar when he approached us with a white rag tied around his wrist. He began gesticulating wildly and attempting to talk to us through the window. My boyfriend cracked the window to speak to him. I just got stabbed, trying to break up a knife fight, he said, pointing at the rag tied around his arm. Can you give me a ride to get supplies? Obviously, alarm bells immediately started going off in my head. I internally called bullshit on this guy being an innocent bystander to a knife fight, but offered to call him an ambulance. I don't want no ambulance. That'll just cause trouble. I just need something to clean it, he replied. More alarm bells, but I do understand that some people fear the police, though I personally feel such a fear is unfounded. So against our better judgment, my boyfriend and I offer him to take him inside the bar and buy him a shot to pour on his wound. But he refused, insisting that going into the bar would just cause trouble and that all he needed was a ride to get supplies. In a final attempt to sway us, he offered to show us his stab wound. He lifted the rag, a clean, pristine white rag, to show us what genuinely looked like a deep cut on his arm. A cut without any blood, anywhere, whatsoever, not even on the white rag. The cut was clearly Halloween makeup. We immediately rolled up the windows and drove away. My boyfriend said as we were driving off, he saw a second man walk out from behind the bar and stroll down the street with the guy who had been insisting on a ride. I truly believe that had we let him into our car, we would have either immediately been robbed or instructed to drive somewhere where we would have been robbed. We did call the police and report a suspicious person, but I never found out if anything came of our report. So, sketchy dude who faked being stabbed to try to get in my car. Let's never meet again. Stay safe out there, folks.